Hi, welcome to OpenArc's ISMAR 2020 tutorial. My name is Adam, and today I'll be giving an introduction into two key concepts in AR VR, SLAM and 3D reconstruction. OpenArc is an open sourced augmented reality SDK that will allow you to rapidly prototype AR applications. It was founded at UC Berkeley in 2016 with the mission of offering core AR functionality to developers for a multitude of devices. You can view our project website at the first link, and the source code is available at the second link to put to use in your own projects or contribute. On the right is a picture of my research partner Moonwan and I at the Jacobs Hall Berkeley Winter Design Showcase. Some of the core AR functions forming the foundation of AR VR today are listed below. At OpenArc, we have developed and are currently developing systems to provide each of these functions. Today, I'll be focusing on two of the functions that OpenArc provides, camera localization and 3D reconstruction. First, SLAM. Lo SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. Localization refers to the process of determining the current position of the camera with respect to some representation of the world. Mapping refers to the process of generating a representation of the world from a sequence of camera frames. These two problems are deeply intertwined. Some of the largest advances in industry AR VR are powered by advances in SLAM. Of note are standalone VR headsets and in-picture AR mobile applications such as Google's 3D Object Viewer and Pokemon Go's AR Plus Pokemon Capturing Scene. What they share in common is the ability to anchor virtual objects into reality. When you move your head inside a VR headset, the expectation is that virtual objects on the display remain grounded as if they were truly there in reality. This requires a frame-by-frame -frame estimation of the camera's position at all times. The algorithm behind this is SLAM. Reading the first sentence from the Wikipedia article on SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping is the computational problem of constructing or updating a map of an unknown environment while simultaneously keeping track of an agent's location within it. The GIF on this slide illustrates an example of a visual SLAM, which uses RGB and depth images from a video feed to track a camera's six degree of freedom pose over time. These six degrees of freedom refer to XYZ position, pitch, roll, and yaw, rotation. Notice the yellow and green dots in the video feed. These are called key points and they are vital to the operation of Visual Slam. In general, a Slam framework is built with the following four steps. First, initialize a map of landmarks. By landmarks, I'm referring to 3D key points and their associated features. Second, receive a new frame from the camera and estimate the change in position and rotation of this frame. Third, extract landmarks from this new frame and add them to our map. Finally, optimize the pose estimation and optimize landmark positions. This process can continue indefinitely and the map continuously expands as new frames come in. So what are the building blocks of SLAM? Today we'll be talking about five building blocks of SLAM. First, key points and descriptors. Second, map representation, how SLAM stores the map of the world. Third, frame to frame transformation estimation. How do we estimate the pose of a camera frame given this map of the world? Four, loop closure. Five, alternative sources of data, such as inertial. Key points or features in the case of SLAM are specific points in an image that satisfy these key conditions, allowing them to be used for SLAM. They are usually corners or pieces of patterns that can be identified and tracked with ease. They need to be salient, meaning they are unique points detectable from different positions and different image frames, and able to be matched between frames. This means if I take an image of a building from one angle, and then reposition and take an image of the building from a different angle, I should be able to find key point pairs between the two frames. They need to be describable, meaning each key point needs a unique label. 
Creating this label is what transforms the point from a key point to a feature. One desirable quality is that the key points should be a rotation and scale agnostic, as rotating the camera or moving farther or closer from the object should not influence whether a key point is detected and matched to itself in a previous frame. Lastly, they need to be of relatively small quantity, as brute force key point matching requires on squared time, checking each key point in a new frame against every key point in a previous frame. Here are two examples of key point detectors and descriptor extractors. On the left is SIFT, short for Scale Invariant Feature Transform. SIFT is an early form of scale and rotation invariant feature extraction. It first detects potential key points using sliding windows of different scales. It then assigns an orientation to the key points based on a summary of the neighboring pixels. Finally, a feature descriptor is created from a 16 by 16 pixel area surrounding the key point. BRISC, short for Binary Robust Invariable Scalable Key Points, is a more recent algorithm. It achieves competitive and sometimes better results, but with faster computation time. The image depicts the sampling pattern that BRISC uses for generating a feature description. In their paper, they report a three times speed increase when finding correspondences between two images over older algorithms, such as SIFT. Correspondence matching being one of the more intensive portions of the SLAM algorithm means this speed increase is greatly appreciated. Once we have these key points, we can perform key point matching. Using these correspondences between two different images, we can now move on to finding the transformation between these two images. Once we have established these key points or landmarks, we have to maintain some form of global map inside SLAM. One example implementation of this global map is a list of keyframes. Keyframes simply refer to images with their associated features and position. Using these keyframes, we can perform loop closure when re-encountering a scene from an older frame. Another implementation of this global map is a list of circles. Surfles, or surface elements, are small disks that dot the surfaces of objects in our scene. By using surfles, we can also maintain a map of the scene that we've seen so far. The map is necessary for both estimating current poses as well as performing loop closures. The next key concept required for SLAM is frame-to-frame -frame pose estimation. Pose, or transformation estimation, refers to the relative translation and rotation between two image frames. The transformation estimation is performed using key point correspondences between any two frames. This is an optimization problem and can be solved in different ways. At its most basic level is the perspective and point algorithm, which, given a number of key point correspondences between two frames, can estimate the transformation between them using simple geometry. This algorithm, along with others, assume that the points recorded belong to a rigid body, meaning their relationship to one another in 3D space remains the same between frames. Another way to solve this frame-to-frame -frame esti pose estimation problem is with an extended Kalman filter. By maintaining a state vector with all current observations and landmarks, the extended Kalman filter can be used to estimate the current position of the camera and minimize error. Another key part of SLAM is loop closure. Loop closure se seeks to answer the question, what happens when I come back to the same place I've been before? What do I mean by this? Imagine walking around a building. You start on the northwest corner of the building and slowly work your way around the building. Once you've finished a circle, you come back to where you began. However, due to slam drift, which is inevitable due to noise, we find that our estimated trajectory takes us to a position different from our starting position. Loop closure refers to the algorithms that detect coming back to the same place, as well as being responsible for optimizing the camera's trajectory such that the current camera pose 
realigns with our starting position. One such implementation of loop closure goes as follows. We maintain a map of keyframes and their description. This description is called a bag of words. Then, with every new frame, we compare it to all previous frames and look for matches between these bags of words. If we detect a loop closure, we optimize the global map to match our new observations. The way frames are described is using an algorithm called bag of words. The idea behind bag of words is to form a description of a frame using a vector of words. Then, the similarity between any two frames is how many words two frames share in common. The words assigned to each frame are created using patches of the image. If two images contain a similar region inside them, that similar region will be assigned the same word in both images, increasing the similarity between these images. The final part of loop closure involves optimizing the global map. One way of doing this is by iterating through a global map of keyframes and optimizing them one by one. We know the current frame's transformation to close the loop. We can then use the updated landmarks to calculate the optimization of the previous keyframe. We can continue to do this iteratively until we have optimized our entire map. Another way to optimize the global landmark is through continuous bundle adjustment. Bundle adjustment seeks to reduce the overall error of our system, the predicted position of all observed landmarks, versus the actual position of all observed landmarks. Bundle adjustment is much more powerful, but oftentimes is run after the SLAM algorithm is terminated as a final polishing, rather than continuously during SLAM due to its computation cost. As the map grows in size, the number of factors to optimize increases in size very quickly. One final augmentation to SLAM is provided via alternative sources of data besides just visual. In this case, inertial. IMUs, or inertial measurement units, measure acceleration. One common place you can find them is inside your mobile phone, used for orientation measurement and other purposes. Inertial data is very helpful for a SLAM algorithm, as understanding the direction of acceleration more tightly bounds the transformation between two frames. Now that we have these fundamental building blocks of SLAM, we can see how they come together to form a fully fledged SLAM algorithm. In general, SLAM is broken into two parts, with the front end involved with tracking the pose of the camera in real time, and the back end optimizing the global map of landmarks. In code terms, these are two separate threads running side by side. Modern day SLAM algorithms pick and choose a front end and a back end in order to achieve the desired results of speed and accuracy. SLAM is an ongoing point of research, and several projects are striving to provide faster and more accurate pose estimation results. OrbSLAM is one such open source project. It is a solely visual system with no inertial data used in its SLAM algorithm. Both BadSLAM and Elastic Fusion use both surfles and keyframes as their global map representation. BadSLAM features continuous bundle adjustment as its back end. OKViz OK features a visual inertial odometry system. This means that along with visual data, inertial data is used to perform SLAM. Adding inertial data creates a much stronger and more robust visual inertial SLAM system. Modern SLAM algorithms and the ones used in industry all rely on this additional inertial data for stronger, stronger camera position estimation. In addition to higher accuracy, having an inertial measurement unit to fall back on during visual failure cases is always welcome. 
A major difficulty is the higher hardware requirement, needing synchronized IMU and cameras. Modern SLAM research focuses on inertial SLAM. Visual inertial SLAMs can be divided into two separate classes, loosely coupled and tightly coupled systems. Loosely coupled inertial systems use the IMU data to simply estimate orientation and pose, for example, using the direction of gravity as a heuristic. Tightly coupled inertial systems add the IMU data as part of the optimization formulation itself. Modern research has leaned towards a tightly coupled SLAM solution for better results. OpenArc's SLAM system puts all these components together into a fully fledged SLAM system. It's built on several existing localization projects, OKViz, short for Open Keyframe Based Visual Inertial SLAM, and DLoop Detector, a loop closure detection library. It is capable of performing real-time estimations from a variety of different cameras, using RGB images, depth images, and IMU data to accurately generate its predictions. The underlying OKViz OK localization system uses a tightly coupled visual inertial odometry system for its pose estimations. The loop closures use the iterative keyframe method described earlier where keyframes are optimized using key points and ransack. The OpenArc SLAM team is constantly in flux as masters of engineering students come and go as the years go on. The lead graduate researcher behind OpenArc SLAM is Joseph Menke. The rest of the students listed here took part in developing OpenArc SLAM as part of their masters of engineering work in the last few years. Visit our website to see a full list of contributors to OpenArc as a whole. Some of the current work on OpenArc SLAM involves dealing with the failure cases of SLAM. Two common failure cases are scenes with minimal features, such as the image on the left depicting a blank white wall, and scenes with repeating features, such as the image on the right containing a row of lockers. SLAM's reliance on good key points fail in both these cases. On the left, there are no features to extract from the image, and on the right, multiple images will return, return the same key points. In these failure cases, having an inertial measurement unit provides a rough estimate of the camera's location. However, due to the nature of measuring position indirectly via acceleration, noise in the measurement explodes very quickly, leading to divergence within a few seconds. The solution to this issue is an algorithm that generates new localization maps upon detection of a failure case, and only attempting to re-merge with an old map prior to the loss of localization, after the failure case is gone and strong features have returned to the scene. With this solution, OpenArc SLAM can run in larger and more diverse environments, robust to failures and able to self-correct via both loop closure and merging of maps when visual SLAM failures occur. To summarize SLAM, we have three steps that are performed continuously throughout the running of a SLAM application. A map of the environment in the form of keyframes and key points is constantly being added to and generated as more of the real scene is explored by the camera. The camera is localized at every frame within this map of the environment. Finally, loop closures are performed when returning to a previous point in the scene re-optimizing the position of the camera and the map of the environment. Next, we will peer into OpenArc and see what allows the SLAM system to run and provide real-time visual inertial SLAM using a variety of different cameras. There are quite a few open source libraries that OpenArc builds upon to create the system we have today. First, we have OKViz, OK the foundation for the SLAM algorithm. It performs localization of the current frame, as well as maintains the keyframe map 
representation of the scene. D-loop detector is used to detect loop closures between the current frame and a keyframe in the keyframe map using the key points extracted and the bag of words extracted from each frame. Brisk is the key point extractor and descriptor used to featureize images. Eigen, Serres, and Sweet Sparse are all linear algebra solvers used throughout the system to quickly find linear solutions. OpenGL is used to visualize the result of the algorithm. DBOW2 provides the bag of words functionality for loop closure. Finally, PCL or point cloud library provides functions such as 2D to 3D projection of depth images and ransack PNP. The two major frame data types in OpenArc are the map keyframe and the multi-camera frame. The map keyframe is used by SLAM in order to generate the keyframe map of the environment. This is reflected in the type of data stored, the position of the frame optimized by SLAM, as well as the key points and descriptors extracted from Brisk in order to be matched with current camera frames for loop closure. In terms of SLAM, this is the back-end data type. On the other hand, the multi-camera frame is the front-end data type. When new frames are retrieved from the camera, they are constructed into a multi-camera frame, and SLAM estimates the current camera's pose. If the current cam frame becomes a keyframe, a map keyframe is constructed from the pose and the extracted features from the frame. A few key objects for SLAM inside OpenArc are listed here. OKViz OK SLAM system is the main API for OpenArc SLAM system. New camera frames and inertial data are pushed into this object and pose estimations are outputted. Sparse map is the object maintaining a map of keyframes for use of detecting loop closures. There are actually several sparse maps stored at any given time, reflecting the loss of localization SLAM fix implementation in which multiple maps are created until they can be merged back together. The camera class is an abstract class which wraps the specific camera API in order to pull new images and new IMU data. GLFW Manager manages the GUI of our SLAM system useful for displaying the results of either SLAM or real-time 3D reconstruction. The SLAM demo has the following structure. First, you initialize a camera object, specific to whichever camera you are using to run OpenArc SLAM. Currently, supported cameras are the Intel RealSense D435i and soon to be Stereo Labs Z2. Then, the SLAM system and GLFW manager objects are instantiated. Callback functions are passed into the SLAM system, called either when a new frame estimation is outputted, a new keyframe is outputted, or a loop closure is detected. Finally, the main loop can be run. At each iteration, a new frame is pulled from the camera as well as an inertial measurement unit measurement. These are passed into the SLAM system, and when the SLAM system is finished estimating pose, the pose of the current frame, the appropriate callback functions are called, and the output of the system can be visualized. The SLAM demo visualizes a 3D axis anchored at the starting position of the camera upon initialization of the SLAM demo. Recent work by OpenArc SLAM team, Jiawen Lai, Chi Wu, and Johan Ramakrishna involved creating an offline version of OpenArc SLAM. The system is capable of recording the necessary data from the camera class in OpenArc during real time and saving it to a folder structure. Then, the data can be reloaded at any time and SLAM run. This was very crucial, especially during contemporary circumstances, as work from home 
has forced team members to collaborate across the world. Test sets need to be portable so that issues can be recreated consistently. The necessary data required to run SLAM in offline mode are listed here. First, we need image data extracted from the camera in order to perform SLAM. Next, we need time-stamped IMU data as considerations have to be made due to the IMU and camera frames running at different frequencies. Timestamps are required for the system as the time between frames is considered when estimating their relative poses. Finally, camera intrinsics are required to accurately project depth images back to their 3D coordinates. The final result is a SLAM demonstration where a set of 3D axes are anchored to the start position of the camera in 3D space, and the user is capable of placing objects at will throughout the scene which will also remain anchored in 3D space, thanks to the estimation of the current camera frame at all times. The code runs at 30 frames per second on PCs, laptops, and tablets. Alternative visualizations, such as a bird's eye view of the trajectory map, are available as well.